Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to divide polynomials using the area model. You can find guided notes at bit.ly forward slash divide poly area. Let's get started. I'm going to use the area model to divide these polynomials. To start, I'm drawing a rectangle. My divisor has two terms, an x and a minus 2. So I'm going to divide this rectangle into two parts, letting this represent x and this representing a negative 2. And then I'm going to start with just a partition here. My first term that I'm looking at is this x cubed. So I'm going to place it here to represent the area of this smaller rectangle. I'm ready to begin dividing. And the way that I'm thinking about this is I have a length here that's x and a length, here, a length here that's unknown. x times what value would give me x cubed? Well, that would be x squared. Now that I know that this is x squared, I'm going to go down to this rectangle. So this is x squared. This is negative 2. If I multiply those together, I get negative 2x squared. So I've used this first term to get started. I now have to think about this second term, this 4x squared. Well, my rectangle already has negative 2x squared, so I'm going to think again about partitioning this, and I'm going to use this rectangle to be a 6x squared. 6x squared plus a negative 2x squared is 4x squared, so I've accounted for the entire value that's here. Now I'm going to start figuring out what this side length has to be. So x times 6x is going to give me 6x squared. Since this is 6x and this is negative 2, multiply those together, I get negative 12x. Going back up here, I have a negative 16x, and so I'm going to subtract 4x. Or we can think of this as negative 12x plus negative 4x. That gives a negative 16x, so we've taken care of that term. Now, x times what is going to give me a negative 4x? Well, that's a negative 4. Moving down to this last part, negative 4 times negative 2 gives me an 8, and there is the representative of 8. So we have completed the division, and our quotient is the value represented by the expression right here, the x squared plus 6x minus 4. Let's take a look at this next problem. I'm going to begin again by drawing my area model. And my divisor again has two terms. So I'm going to divide this into two parts, representing the x and the minus 5. Now there are sometimes people will go ahead and draw all the lines to get this to work out. Some people draw it as you go, whichever one works for you. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the entire piece. All right, so we're going to start with this x cubed, just as we did before. So x times x squared gives me this x cubed. Negative 5 times x squared represents negative 5x squared. So now I'm going to work on this negative 10x squared. I have negative 5x squared minus 5x squared. Add these two together, that gives you negative 10x squared. Now x times negative 5x gives me negative 5x squared. I'm going to move down here. We're looking at negative 5x times negative 5. That's going to give me a positive 25x. I need 20x, so I need to take off 5x's. This added together gives me a 20x. x times negative 5 gives me that negative 5x. And then to finish it off, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. But you'll notice in our expression up here, we need a 26. So the area of this rectangle is not completely done. I'm missing one unit of area. This is what happens when you have a remainder. So I have an area over here of 1 that cannot be divided evenly by our divisor of x minus 5. So my quotient is actually going to be the x squared minus 5x minus 5 with this remaining 1 that is not evenly divided by x minus 5. 
So this is how we have to write our final answer. Okay, I hope these two examples have helped you see how to divide polynomials using area model. And I'll remind you again, there are guided notes at bit.ly forward slash divide polyarea. All right, good luck.